Hello and welcome to Piano and Keyboard Artist, where we discuss the artists related to pianos, keyboards and synthesizers. And continuing with my Depeche Mode album review series, this is Violator Part 9. Welcome to the most in-depth Depeche Mode album review series ever conducted by an independent YouTuber. We're up to part 9 now with Halo, so if you've not watched parts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, get out of here, go watch those and then come back to this part. The Fletch Mandatory Banana! Fletcher! The clapping hands! Clap all they can! <laughs> we cannot speak about Depeche Mode without firing up a banana. Fletcher! Halo. Halo is the fourth track on this groundbreaking album. And just like we do on all the other videos, we're gonna run through this in a lot of detail. Starting off with the structure, I'm gonna break it down, just strip it down onto the piano so that we're not distracted by all the glorious synthesized sounds. So we'll run through the structure. I will then give you uh, examples of how Dave and Martin layer their vocals. And then we will move on to the Emacs over here where I actually have some of the original samples. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's go for it. You wear guilt like shackles on your feet. Like a halo in rivers. Just the opening lines are so dire. The actual feel and sound of the song, even when we strip the synthesizers and the production away, even if we play it just on the piano, the composition and the arrangement, the melody, the structure, give the song a real sense of doom an impending gloom. This is a very, very big Depeche Mode song. Halo is probably a song that is not as highly rated uh, in the Depeche Mode catalog. Um, with a lot of people coming forward uh, since I've made this channel and saying that Halo is probably one of their top five Depeche Mode songs. Just listening to the simplistic bass line, which is simply And of course you've got that, you know, the way they did that. They did that as well, that kind of vocal effect. They did it in um, Personal Jesus, that. And now that's impossible to do. Um, how did they do that? Uh, it was probably done in past like, you know, recorded and then, you know, patched together. Um, I just loved the innovation in Violator and doom. Boom, boom, ba -do 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 -do. Just this bass line. It just, just that bass line on itself and the sparse opening to this record, it just feels, <laughs> there are so many emotions uh, that can be conjured up here, but it just feels so scary and sort of like and just the way this this this, this bass line goes it gives you this sense of impending doom and this feeling of uneasiness it's a brilliant brilliant song so on top of that bass line you then have this synth part once again god knows what the starting point was which is But just demonstrating on the piano. So starting off with the You were guilt like shackles on your feet, like a halo in rivers. Let's 
Let's get into the vocals, actually. So, Dave... Sings in his deep, dark baritone, which only he can do. And, once again, the way Dave and Martin's voices layer and harmonise is absolutely brilliant. So, let's look at how they layer their vocals. Dave's part, uh, it's very similar to what they do in uh, Never Let Me Down Again, where Dave's lead vocal part is not very melodic, it's quite simplistic, whereas Martin is creating, uh, uh, giving a lot more of the um, the melody with his harmony. It's a very unusual way they approach it, and this is one of uh, Depeche Mode do it in a lot of songs, and it makes them uh, completely unique. So, just for context, let's have a look at Never Let Me Down Again. So, on Never Let Me Down Again, Dave fundamentally sings just on the G note, so he's, it's, it's just one note. Of course, he bends a little bit, so it's fundamentally We're flying high, we're watching the world pass us by. He bends a little bit. Never want to come down, never want to put my feet back down on the ground. It's not very melodic, it's just on one note, which is bent a little bit, but it's very... he drives it. And then it is Martin above that which creates the... Uh, which gives it more of the melody, which is... We're flying high, we're watching the world pass us by. Never want to come down, never want to put my feet back down on the ground. You can see how he's providing a lot more of the melody. Now that's quite unusual, uh, depending on the style of music. Usually you have the lead singer singing uh, more melodically than the backing singers, but not always. But in Depeche Mode, very often you've got Dave singing uh, not very melodically on certain choruses but Martin singing very mel melodically above him and around him and that's just what gives uh, one of the, it is all of these things and more that give Depeche Mode its unique sound when our world say you fall apart when the walls come tumbling in though we may deserve it it won't be worth it if we play it on the piano, it's... Now, Martin's is very interesting because it's an octave higher, um, but he, instead of just singing completely you know, uh, an octave higher, he's, he, he's uh, variating, um, he's harmonizing. When our world say fall apart, when the walls come tumbling in, though we may deserve it, it won't be worth it. And then the second time round he goes, when our world say you fall apart When the walls come tumbling in Though we may deserve it It won't be worth it So it's, it won't be worth it Right, let's check out some of the iconic keyboard parts here. So on this Emacs keyboard here, I have the original Martin Gore sounds and one of the most iconic ones, which you, which is instantly recognizable, is this one. That always reminded me of like this huge, big, um, sort of like ocean liner, like a in big industrial ship. Like, you know, they got those horns. Bum, 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 bum. Of course, that's in my imagination, and uh, you would obviously, you know, imagine something different. But I do love this sound. So that's straight from Martin's sound bank. Uh, obviously, in live performance, he'd be playing that. It would be, you know, sent to the, the front of house engineer, and there'd probably be a little bit more effects on it. But there are some effects built into the sound, as you can hear. Once again, the layering and the complexity of that sound is something I don't want to get into because we've spoken about this before. It's brilliant. I don't know what the starting point was. 
I don't know if it was a combination of a sample combined with a, you know, a, a sound which was generated from scratch. I don't know, but this is what made Depeche Mode so groundbreaking at the time was, um, you know, their intense uh, 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 focus on uh, sound design and, uh, um, and, and always wanting to do things differently in a way you've never heard before. And Violator was indeed that album. But this sound... <laughs> So when Halo starts, it's got that. It's got that. And of course, you've got the. Okay, let's have a look at Fletcher's sound bank for Halo. So just, okay, Fletch. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so looking over here, nothing there. Oh, there we go. That's a piano sample, uh, and it's got the, and that will be on the part, bring your chains. Your lips of tragedy. So, not difficult to play, but iconic. You know, you just got to hit it on the bar. Bring your chains. Your lips of tragedy. It is a beautiful sound. Just listen to it. It's so long and there's so much detail in that one sound. I mean, this was typical of Depeche Mode. I mean, it's not just a, just a piano boom. There's so much to it. Listen again. It's clearly a piano sample. Sounds like a real piano to me, as opposed to a, you know, a synthesized piano of the time. Um, but I love this kind of wah, 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 wah kind of sound over it. Wow. Um, it's also worth mentioning, of course, that the samples I'm playing you here are from the Songs of Faith and Devotion tour. So they were slightly tweaked to bring it in line with the Songs of Faith and Devotion period. But anyway, Fletch, so the most significant part we found for you so far is that one. What else we got, Fletch? Nothing there. Okay, so it's one of those. As you can see, these are very sort of like string sounds from the uh, devotional period. Very epic. Nothing there. So it's just that one note there. I don't even know at which part you'd bring that in. It's probably at the end, at the climax of the song. Nothing there. So not many parts on Fletcher's keyboard, but you know, this being probably the most iconic of all these parts. Fletch, put down the banana, stop clapping, get back to the keyboard. You've got to play that iconic part. Now Fletch, now, do it now Fletch. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not have Alan's sounds for this, but um, I do believe that Alan will do this part. Of course, Alan handled all the sort of you know, the most complex melodical parts of you know of all the live shows, um, but unfortunately, I don't have those parts. Right, so what can I say more about Halo? An absolutely great song. Uh, a sense of doom and gloom and the layering of those strings. The strings on this are absolutely brilliant. It does make me think of a concert I went to see of theirs um, and they, they did a, a gold frap version, which was amazing, really, really good. It was so different to the original, but um, they really sort of majored and illustrated the, the, you know, the brilliance of the strings on this and just really sort of went in a very sort of like string, emotional string. Um, direction. Uh, so far as the production on the record is concerned, once again we see a very sort of minimalist approach, a very craft working, you know, with the with all these um, 
great iconic sounds, rhythmic parts, but with a lot of space in between the sounds. As Kevin Paul has said, um, if you watched my interview with Kevin Paul, Kevin Paul said that when he did the remix, you know, the 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 remixing for the 2.2 2005 Dolby Surround 5.1 remasters. Kevin went on to say that when you analyze the parts of Violator, there is nothing there that should not be there. Every single sound is so important and so iconic. I think uh, Kevin uses the, uh, the term, there's no fat or there's, you know, there's no fluff or fuzz. There's nothing that's kind of there just to kind of be there. Every single sound is of extreme importance and, and the detail and complexity behind every sound is just mind blowing. Right, so let's quickly run through Halo uh, on the piano uh, in sort of free-flowing improvisation style, just so we can appreciate the beauty of this track. get carried away there love the song um, I'm sure you do as well so my friends please leave your comments below um, anything you'd like to say about Depeche Mode the album review series and particularly on Halo let me know in the comments below 
Please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you on the next installment, which will be part 10. Take care. Adios.